Hey guys, Mike the Bike here, back for yet another video. Today we got a Rust update. This week, Rust got an absolutely amazing update with some really big changes, and yeah, it's probably one of my favorite updates the game has received in a long time. Oh, firstly, um, my Rust server is back up and running. The map is a lot smaller than the default map, which I find much more interesting. The default map is far too large, in my opinion. It's got a two times gather rate, which is a lot less than I think the first server I had was eight times gather rate. Um, I'd say Rust has changed now where two times is totally enjoyable, and I appreciate the challenge because eight times was a bit easy. It's got kits, it's got TP, it's got a bunch of things. Basically, go check it out. To join the server is, of course, very straightforward. Go to the play tab, go to the modded category, search Viking. The title will be be a little bit different but it will say Viking Republic and you can join from there. I'll be recording on here and um, it should be fun. So yeah, please join my Rust server. I'd love to have some players on here. Come check it out. Now on to the update. So probably the first thing that you may already know of is they've added the sentry turret or turret or auto turret, whatever you want to call them. Basically these are little machine guns that run automatically and you do not have to be online for them to work. So they're designed to be sort of a raid defense tool. You can leave them on at night and they'll shoot things for you. However, they are designed more so for indoor use. They only have a range of 20 to 30 meters, which is not all that great. They have a 180 degree arc, which means, you know, if you get behind it somehow, then you could disable it if you were an enemy. They take 5.56 five, rounds. However, they only take regular rounds, not high velocity or explosive, which is probably a good thing. Now, they are not easy to get. You probably will have trouble getting some kind of gallery like this because they require the CCTV camera and the targeting computer, which can only be found at airdrops or helicopter crash sites from shooting down a chopper. So, there's a wonderful example of how effective these things are. However, of course, that wasn't naked. We'll see how they do against armored victims. And also it'll change how people build their bases because you're going to set up probably long hallways and stuff like that so that these things can gun people down. Honestly, they're great. It's going to change bases and change raiding a lot and it's going to add a different dynamic to offline raiding as long as you have one of these things. In order to use it, you do have to have authorization on it and basically that adds you to the list on it of things it won't kill. So you got to get your friends to authorize as well. However, once the thing has been turned on, I won't right now because he's there, but once it's turned on, people cannot authorize and turn it off themselves. You have to already be authorized. There was some worry that a random naked could technically get behind it and then turn it off. You can't. You have to destroy it or just not stay in its 180 degree arc. It is susceptible to explosive rounds apparently. That is the main thing that hurts it a lot. So frag grenades apparently are really good to taking these things out. I really like how they look. They've got a wonderful texture. They're expensive and hard to get, and it's going to be cool to see them. On that note, frag grenades got a bit of a buff, thank goodness, because these things really were not used at all. The bean can grenades are still pretty crappy, but whatever. Basically, these things used to bounce around a lot, and they still do. Really, that is still kind of bad. Basically, the idea is that these things are a little bit more effective and a little bit more predictable to throw. Um, certainly an improvement, but I think that they could still be better. They don't throw like some sort of 20 pound rock anymore, which is a little bit of, a, of an improvement, but you know, whatever. Tool cupboards have been totally changed. Basically in the past, you could place down pretty well as many tool cupboards as you wanted. So as an example, you could place one down here and then you could go upstairs and place another one upstairs. That would mean that in order for a raider to get access to all your tool cupboards, or authorize to them, you'd have to authorize this one, and then go upstairs and authorize that one as well. They've changed that now, where... I'll, I'll basically... I'll toss up the chart that they showed on the Rust update, because it explains it a bit easier. But, basically, if it's in the vicinity of this building privilege, like, range on this cupboard, then you cannot place another tool cupboard in that. So basically, you'd have to build, have something way over here, and then it would let me place it, but if I go over here, within its building privilege, it won't let me place it. See? You're too close to another cupboard. So you have to be outside of that building privilege area, and then you're good. And it'll make raiders' lives a little bit easier and less annoying, and you'll have to plan out your bases a little bit differently too. 
they've added a ton of new signs to the game and banners and all sorts of things. Here's a few random examples. I don't know. I I spent yeah. Anyways, so here's like room service. You know, quality. There's nice rip. So here's some examples. You know, I've got this nice art gallery sign. These are my attempts at art because, you know, you could buy these on eBay right afterwards. Don't worry. And, yeah, they're wonderful, you know. Uh, there's some modded servers where you can, like, put images. So I'm sure people will do put all sorts of things on these. And especially these. I know exactly what's going to go on these. We've got these nice tavern things. They look interesting, too. Got this thing here. Thought that was nice. And then they've got a standing banner. And then I've got a few other signs here, some arrows, stuff like this. Thought it was pretty nice. They've also made a lot of different tools throwable now, and rocks too, actually. This, I think, is great. It'll just add another element to melee combat, in my eyes. So before, melee combat is basically getting lucky, but once somebody starts sprinting away, then, you know, that's the end of the fight, unless they turn around and are dumb. But if you're smart, you would just keep running, because, you know, he would never be able to hit you. So, let's say... Here, dude, we're having a fake battle, okay? Let's fake fight, you know? Roar! Okay, so we're having a battle, it's a good time. It's a good time. Now run away, run away, run away! Run! Now see, we could attempt to throw a hatchet, and if you were a good shot, you could maybe hit him. Which I think is freaking cool. It, do it only works on these little one-handed things. I thought it worked on the pickaxe, but it doesn't when I tested this. But yeah, honestly, I think it's very cool. It looks really sweet, and it'll just change melee combat and make it less stupid, honestly. You could even throw rocks. The animation seems kind of dumb. Like, I picture this as a solid, like, five-pound rock. It tosses it like a golf ball. Like, okay. But at least it doesn't go that far. But still, whatever, whatever. It is a video game! They also buffed sandbags and barricades. They've basically made them better in every way. They've got a lot. They've got double the health. They're cheaper to make. They're quicker to make if you're on a vanilla server, and they're taller. The taller is probably the biggest thing. This will just make them a little bit more effective if you're um, trying to defend a location. You know, you can pew pew. I still find it kind of annoying how you have to have building privilege to place these. Because if you remember the wooden barricade from Legacy, you know, people just, that was a typical kit of gear. You would have a couple of wooden barricades with you on your travels. I don't see people running around with sandbags these days. With that said, of course, these would be exploited and used for raiding, so I do understand. Honestly, probably my favorite thing about this update, which is really small and isn't even mentioned on the main part of the dev vlog, is they change recoil on the Bolt and the AK. Before, I found the recoil on these to be way too snappy, like my screen just jumped around everywhere, and especially on the bolt, you couldn't see where your shots were landing, even though they added this wonderful feature where you don't have to automatically reload. I think that they'll probably make it a little bit harder, like I think they'll probably say that this is not enough recoil. I'm personally okay with it, because for example with the AK, you know, in full auto, it's still not very effective, but if you tap fire, and if you crouch especially, it's very usable, whereas in the past, it's just a piece of junk, honestly. PvP, for me, is a lot less enjoyable, but now it's a little bit better. If I had to suggest one thing, this is going off ta topic, please, developers, if you're watching this, make bleeding less OP, because it's just ridiculous how people are going to pull out their bandage and combat totally gets put to a halt and it's just I don't know it just makes it less interesting if people are going to cover to bleed or because they're bleeding all the time and and especially because the only way to stop it is either large medkits or band-aids like it's such a stark contrast you can have a bandage which anyone can make or this super expensive large medkit like um please fix it it's, it's so stupid Anyways guys, that's actually the end of this Rust update. I still think it's a really solid update. They've added a ton of new things if you haven't played Rust recently with these attachments and all sorts of cool things. It really has evolved a lot and slowly but surely is becoming just a really amazing game. Probably some of the best developers out there if you think that they got, well, they got my money for this game like two years ago. Oh, yeah, over two years ago now. And they're still doing updates on it. So that, that is very respectful. You know, of course, they're not the only ones. I don't know. I just find it really impressive how much they've changed the game. 
Anyways, that's going to be the end of this Rust update video. Let me know if you want to see more of these. I try to keep them um, a little bit more objective, but I also want to share my opinion and maybe some suggestions. Not that my opinion is worth much, but I think it's interesting anyways. If you enjoy it, of course, do all the usual things. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.